Hi, I'm Dioli from UC Berkeley. I'll talk about an off-chip attack on hardware enclaves using the memory bus. This is a joint work with Dongha from SK Hynix, Ian, Chiache, and Raluca from UC Berkeley. Chiache is now a professor at Texas A&M University. Trusted execution environment protects a sensitive application from other applications on a system or even from a privileged software such as the operating system or hypervisor. The protection is enforced by trusted hardware, which creates the protected memory region often called an enclave. The code and the data of the application will reside inside the enclave, and hardware guarantees the integrity and confidentiality of the program execution. Also, the hardware can cryptographically attest that the enclave is correctly initialized and is running on a legitimate hardware. In TEE, only the CPU package is trusted, so any external hardware components such as DRAM are all untrusted. For instance, uh, one of the most major TEE, Intel SX, has a strong threat model against external DRAM. Uh, since it assumes that adversary can arbitrarily read or write the memory, the processor includes a hardware extension called memory encryption engine in their memory controller. In SGX, all of the enclave data leaving the processor package is transparently encrypted by this memory encryption engine. Although TEEs provide strong memory isolation and protection, some programs are often vulnerable to side channel attacks. If the program has some data dependent memory access pattern, the attacker can infer the data. Here is an example attack scenario introduced by Xu et al. on Hanspel, which is a popular open source spell checker library. For a given input text, Hanspel traverses each word in the input text and performs spell checking. During the spell checking, Hanspel searches for each word in a dictionary, and the dictionary is implemented with a hash table where each word is stored in a hash bucket. Hanspel usually uses well known dictionary files, so the address of each bucket entry can be easily obtained by the attacker. Let's say uh, the text contains the word book. While Hanspel is iterating the hash bucket to search the word, it will sequentially access the specific addresses. So if the attacker can observe the memory access pattern of a victim, she can infer the data without actually looking at the data. A lot of side channel attacks have been performed on SGX enclaves. These attacks exploit the adversarial or shared on-chip components to leak access pattern of a victim. For example, Cache side channel attack uses shared loss level cache, and page table based attacks such as control channel attack or flush based cache side channel attacks use adversarial MMU managed by the untrusted OS as a side channel. Unfortunately, most of them are even more powerful than typical side channel attacks because of the strong FRAM model. Also, a lot of mitigation techniques have been proposed to defend the side channel leakage from the hardware enclaves. These mitigations use existing hardware or additional software to fully partition the shared resources or conceal any data dependent state changes from the attacker so that the attacker cannot observe the memory access pattern. There are also TEEs from academia which redesign the entire system to fully isolate the resources such as page table cache to fundamentally defeat the side channels. Note that all of these have been focusing on attacks and mitigations inside a processor package. However, the attacker may also present outside of the chip. An adversary who can physically access the machine will also be able to perform an off-chip side channel attack by looking at the memory transactions between the CPU package and the external memory. Although the external memory is untrusted in Intel SGX RAM model, they only encrypt data Thus, the attacker might still be able to see the addresses in the address bus. In this work, we demonstrate Membuster attack, which uses a memory interposer and signal analyzer to capture the addresses from the bus. We show that the attacker can successfully reconstruct the data from the observed access pattern. We found that one can easily obtain a device needed for the attack, as they are widely used by many companies for debugging purposes. We highlight that none of existing side channel defenses, nor TEs, can prevent this attack. 
This is because MemBuster is fundamentally different from previous side channel attacks performed inside a chip. First, the attacker's observation doesn't require any detectable interference such as interrupts or page faults. So it is difficult to detect the, even the presence of the attacker. Also, partitioning the on-chip resources does not prevent the attack because the attacker directly observes the memory transactions outside of the chip. In order to prevent the attack, we need to make memory access entirely oblivious, which is very expensive in terms of performance. Or to encrypt the address bus, which is actually infeasible in commodity DRMs and requires expensive additional hardware such as smart memory. We found several challenges for a MemBuster. First, there are multiple layers of address translation between the victim and the DRM commands we observe. We need to somehow synchronize these multiple traces and reverse translate the observed commands to obtain the victim's virtual address. Second, the attacker may not see most of the memory access pattern because of the cache hierarchy. In general, a large amount of memory access will hit the cache, and the attacker may observe only a small amount of cache misses. This is especially challenging because modern processors usually have a large loss of a cache up to a few megabytes. Lastly, um, there are unuser behaviors of Asterix that needs to be handled by the attacker. For example, the Linux kernel can usually configure the cache ability of each page using page attribute table. However, such feature does not work with SGX enclaves. In this talk, I will talk about how we addressed the second problem. For other details, please refer to our paper. So how can we maximize the side channel information? The goal is to increase the cache misses while avoiding any detectable interference so that we can keep all of the uh, advantages of the off-chip side channel. A simple solution is to prime the cache Priming is a technique used in prime probe attack, which sequentially accesses a buffer to evict the cache lines. So, um, however, we found that we cannot get enough uh, bandwidth um, we needed for the attack. This is because the priming is effective only when it could evict most of the cache lines before the victim accesses the cache. Since the cache is usually a few megabytes, this could take hundreds of milliseconds. In general, it was too, uh, far too long compared to the memory access interval of programs, which is an order of microseconds. So how do we solve this problem? We address this problem based on two observations. First, we observe that um, the attacker can control the address mapping because Asterix only verifies the virtual addresses. So the attacker can use the OS privilege to make an arbitrary virtual to physical mapping. Another observation is that there is a certain critical address range that is useful for the attack. In Hanspel, for example, the only address range needed for the attack is the one containing the hash table. So our idea is to squeeze the cache based on these observations. By carefully manipulating the address mapping, we can map a certain addresses to be a, to a small portion of cache. Also, we can perform priming on these quiz cache so they can evict all the cache lines before the victim access the cache. And eventually this will increase the number of useful cache misses for the attack. To squeeze the cache first, the attacker identifies the critical pages in the virtual address space of the victim. Next, the attacker maps the critical pages to a certain physically PC pages, which share the same group of last level cache sets. By using this technique, we can incur both conflict and capacity misses only for the critical addresses. In addition, we can perform priming on the same group of cache sets. This still does not interfere the enclave program in a detectable way, and it does not incur orders of magnitude slowdown because we are only increasing the cache misses for the critical pages. The slowdown was usually indistinguishable from benign slowdown. We evaluated our attack on Intel i5 processor with 9 megabyte LLC. We used com commodity DDR4 DRAM. And to get the results, we collaborated with SK Hynix. But based on our survey, one can obtain the same devices with thousands of dollars per month. On the software side, uh, we have performed the attack on two unmodified applications, which are Hanspel and Memcached. 
In order to run those unmodified applications inside SGX, we used Graphene Library OS. And for squeezing, uh, cache squeezing, we modified the SGX driver to manage the memory mapping. I'll only show the result on Hanspel. We ran spell checking on two different documents. First one is randomly generate words, and secondly, the natural language document, which is Wizard of Oz. So Wizard of Oz was much harder to attack since it contains a lot of repetitive common words, incurring fewer cache misses on these words. The results shows that the combination of cache squeezing and priming can recover most of the victim's data. For example, it could recover up to 99% of the random document and 85% of the natural language document. Moreover, squeezing plus priming slows down the application only up to 36% which is difficult to distinguish from benign slowdown. Since both techniques still do, uh, still do not incur any interrupts or page faults, is, it is very difficult to detect the attack with the existing hardware or software. To conclude, we demonstrated Membuster on off-chip sidechain attack using an unencrypted um, memory address bus. Uh, we performed the attack on commodity CPU and DRAM and showed the possibility of the attack. Since the attack does not cause any visible interference to the victim, there um, is no easy way to detect the attack. Also, previous on-chip mitigation techniques or other TEs based on resource partitioning cannot defeat the attack. The mitigation techniques we perceive are oblivious memory or an entirely new architecture, which are both expensive in terms of performance or hardware costs. Thank you for watching.